Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning, or wherever you are. This is Minister Imperial Brown here, and I guess you may call this my first official vlog uh, that I uh, might, might have on my YouTube channel, which I'm doing absolutely nothing with. But I'm actually sitting here in the suburb of Chicago with one of our fellow passport brothers here, one of my fellow vloggers here is based in the Philippines. His name is Cliff Norman. And uh, what's the name of your channel, Cliff? It's Cliff and Rue. It's Cliff and Rue. Okay, I don't know if you may be familiar with that, but he's on YouTube. And he's been doing vlogging for quite a while, but we up here. And uh, I just wanted to take this chance to finally, uh, glad to meet him and interview him a little bit. And he's probably gonna be interviewing me later <laughs> on. But uh, I just wanna take this opportunity to talk to him today. And, and first of all, you can go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, Cliff, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I'm uh, Cliff Norman, as, as Imperial mentioned, uh, one half of Cliff and Rue, our channel that we started a little over a year ago. Um, I was living in Indiana and have moved to uh, the Philippines, originally from New Jersey. Um, yeah, so life... Um, life changes and things happen so we had a situation where we had lost our son and we didn't want to be in the area anymore the timing kind of worked out my wife wanted to go back home anyway i wanted to get her back there close to the family so we went and uh been there for a little over a year now mm -hmm. just tell us about uh your life in america uh, uh first about how old are you if you don't mind me asking i am uh, 49 years young okay um, a baby. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby. Um, uh, like I said, grew up in New Jersey. Um, what part of New Jersey? Uh, Morris County, Dover, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, so about 45 minutes out of Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I've I been see. to Jersey. I've been to Franklin Lakes. I don't know if you heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of Franklin Lakes. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, south of where I was at, but yeah. Okay. So now there's two Jerseys. There's New Jersey, where yeah. I'm from, and then there's South Jersey. South Jersey is a whole different beast. Oh, so. <laughs> okay. All right. Got to make sure people know the distinction. I'm from New Jersey, not South Jersey. Not South Jersey. Not South Jersey. Okay. So were you born in New Jersey? Born in New Jersey, Okay. Yeah. All right. And how long did you stay in Jersey before you left? Um, I was in Jersey until I was 19. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the Marine Corps, um, came out of the Marine Corps, then I lived in Pennsylvania. That kind of started my whole living away. Um, mm -hmm. Lived in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, um, and Indiana. Okay, all the right. I lived in, yeah. So, did you go to school at all? What was your education? Yeah. You so, have? I have a, a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. I have undergrads in crim criminal justice. Uh, I was going to be a cop. Mm. Built, built uh, I like can a, figure, a cop. yeah, yeah. Uh, I can see you now. Got disenchanted with that because I don't actually wanted to help people, and I couldn't help people that way. Not saying the cops can't help. Right. I just couldn't help as a cop. Right. Um, so I shift gears after my bachelor's degree and went into uh, counseling. Okay, so you're just a mental health counselor. What type of uh, maladies do you counsel people? Uh, primarily uh, mental health and then substance use, although I can counsel anything. I've done uh, couples counseling, family counseling, group counseling. Um, and even some school counseling. School counseling. Yeah. So you do like deal with people that like uh, PTSD and depression, anxiety. Yeah. Primarily, um, my clients will have uh, anxiety, depression, PTSD, uh, bipolar disorder, schizoaffective, schizo schizophrenia are, are the most that they have. But those are are more um, clinically recognized. There are some. You know, specialties, uh, borderline personality disorder, yeah. narcissistic personality disorder. Mm -hmm. Don't get very many of those, mm -hmm. thankfully. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, unfortunately, I guess I've been introduced them to them through the other side of the table. Yes, you. I've def definitely suffered from all of the first three anyway: depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Absolutely. Because uh, I tell people all the time, when you're coming up in Chicago, this is the battlefield. Yeah. When you're coming up in America, it's the battlefield. Yeah. you coming up as a black man, it's the battlefield. You're dealing with these women in here in the <laughs> West, it's the definite battlefield. That's a whole nother war, right? All right, yes, yeah, a whole nother war. So what got you to even thinking about moving 
to the Philippines? Or how did it come on your radar? Well, I had a couple buddies who um, were tired of me hanging out in the United States and decided to invite me out. We actually went to Thailand first. Okay. Um, and I got a little bit of a bug, you know, leaving the country and seeing different things. And um, when I left the country, I actually made me, you know, appreciate America a little bit more, you know, the things we have, the mm-hmm. things that we do. Um, and so went to Thailand a couple times and I, I dated a Thai woman for a short time. And, um, and this, at this point I was single and looking for, looking for something. I know what at yeah. that time. Um, so I came back to the States working and everything like that. And they were starting to plan a trip to the Philippines. So I went on a Filipino dating site, it was Philippine Cupid, I think. Good, that's the most famous one. Yeah. Um, and so I was shocked and surprised, and, and I didn't believe it at first. Uh, the first day I got about 40 or 50 interests, you know, uh, and I'm like, there's no way in hell. They messaged these, you. Yeah, I'm like, there's no way all these beautiful women are interested in me. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's mostly because I felt beaten down by the women in, in, my, in our of country. Of course, I can uh, relate. So I wasn't, you know, I got a lot of, you're too nice. That's what I got a lot from the women in the States. You're yeah. too nice, you're too nice. And I couldn't quite understand what the hell too nice was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was frustrated. And I said, you know what? Let me start to look for a woman in, in another country. Yeah. I didn't know if it was going to be Philippines, Thailand, China, right. whatever. Um, I you wanted Asian countries because they're family oriented and that's what I wanted. I wanted to get back to, you know, what we were eventually and what we were at one point in the States. Right. In the fifties, mostly yeah, fifties and before. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I wasn't, obviously it was born in the seventies, but my parents were born. And, and so obviously. they kind of had that family orientation. And I remember, um, in Florida, like a couple hundred family members being in the same area. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted that closeness. And so I started looking and, uh, initially, I'd found Rue was one of the the first ones that kind of sent an interest, but she, oh, really? to me, she was too young. Um, so, oh, so she she snuck in there, huh? Yeah, so actually yeah. sent so, you. So, a... Essentially, we were just friends at first. I was dating another Filipino woman for a while. Okay. And Rue was actually helping me with the culture, and, and when she would get angry or upset, Rue was able to tell me, oh, well, "This is why, and this is how mm. we are." And mm. so um, it didn't work out, obviously, with the right. other woman and. I was going to go back on a dating site, and Rue was just like, hey, you know, and I was like, ah, but you're too young, because I was worried about what the people here were going to say. Right. How old was, how old were you, and how old was she? Oh, uh, we're 21 years difference in age. Yeah, that's a good, so that's a gap. When I met her, she was 21, I think. Okay, so she's a full-grown woman. Yeah, she was an adult, yeah, yeah. Although a lot of, if you listen to a lot of what you see on the, the, the woman bashing uh, passport bros, it's... Oh, you know, you wanted someone who was a child and all this other stuff. No, I wanted someone who didn't have all the uh, uh, psychological issues, all the psychological damage, all the uh, all the baggage, all the, the baggage, all the kids, you know, uh, yeah. from previous relationships. I didn't want all that. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, I had to go younger. Um, not saying that I couldn't have found it here, but it is a lot easier to find in other places. So, long story short. Um, we shifted from friendship to, you know, a romantic relationship, and the rest is history, as they say. Yeah, was, yeah, it was just like this for that, like I said, so so she actually was one of that 40 or 50 that messaged yeah, she, you. she came in through the, the first, first influx, and I say the first influx because I was getting anywhere between 20 and 30 a day. A day. A day. So how many did you get all in total before you decided to, to leave it alone? Um, I picked out five. You picked out five. I got five to talk to. Um, just kind of established myself, make friends. The rest, I just, I kind of went off the site after that. Um, the first one that I had picked to come see in the Philippines was out of Iloilo. Um, she turned out to be a bit of a scammer. Uh, okay. Hey. Which, hey, you, you get that. Um, I had sent her some money to fly to Manila, and she just kept the money. Mm, yeah, uh, the classic. Uh... Yeah, so... Um, the one that I wound up dating actually lived in Manila, so she kind of had the best shot. She had access to me, mm-hmm. um, and she was nice. I mean, she's married to a guy and lives in the States now. Oh, okay. Um, she was a good person, just wasn't good for me. Right. And so um, the other other few, like there was another two, they wound up just being kind of friends, and then there was Rue, and Rue and I were friends as well, but we kind of took it to the next level. So Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's wonderful. I, I mean, I can just... 
imagine again, you know, you know, we'll be talking and I'm glad I connected with you because, you know, I'm at a, I guess, embryonic stage as far as me moving to the Philippines and moving that way. I mean, I'm planning on doing it. Like I said, I'm planning on getting the hell up out of here in uh, September. Um, but of course, I'm a little different. I'm a little older. I'm going to be retiring, so I'm going over there to stay. And um, so I have a little different perspective, you know. And then we'll talk about, of course, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to build my network over there and meet people like you. You know, you're part of my network over there now. And, of course, Calvin and a few other people, you know, Data Middleton and... Uh, Bobby Quazon and several different people over there that I've gotten to know. Um, so, well, when did you actually, so how long was this when you actually went to the Philippines and started, you know, with, did you join the Filipino Cupid in America or did you wait till you in got America. there? In okay, America. in America. Yeah. Okay. And how long between the time you got on the site in America before you actually went to the Philippines? About four months. Okay, so that's that's a very short time window. Because um, I remember the little, little time that I was on those dating sites. I mean, you can kind of tell, uh, you know, they really kind of want somebody that's going to be, are you coming to the Philippines? Yeah, you know. yeah, absolutely. Because most people don't. So the, the funny thing that I've seen, especially when I see all these people bashing people for going to other countries mm -hmm. to find someone, um, is most of these people will never leave the United States. Yes. Uh, so they have no clue. Right. Um, my brother was one of them, but my brother did come over to, to my wedding, and so. Well, that's nice it, of them. Yeah, it was. It was a different. Like, Do you get along with your brother? Oh yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Cause one of mine, I don't get along with very well, and unfortunately, I gotta stay with him. <laughs> but now uh, he's he's uh, he's a good guy. He's uh, got two boys. Um, and he's married. His wife is amazing. I, I consider her my sister. Uh, it's just he's real busy, so we don't talk as much as I'd like to. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so he went over, and, and he was he was shocked and surprised as well. Um, I think if my sister-in-law hadn't scooped him up, it was going to be a Filipino woman that was going to get him. Yeah. So she she yeah. lucked out. She yeah. loved, she messed around a little bit more. She would have <laughs> lost him. Yeah, because he went there. I mean, most of it is just getting there. It's not that. Filipino women are not desperate by any means, um, mm -hmm. and and despite what you you know what a lot of people say, they're they're highly educated. Most yes, of the they are. I can't believe remember the percentage, but most of the nurses, um, we as far as a culture, we get from the Philippines. I know that very well because I grew up in the healthcare field, and, and my first office when I started at my job that I was on for twenty years, my office the building that my office was in was a Filipina nurse's dorm. And I still, when they were closed, they were, had just recently closed the dorm down. And a matter of fact, I still have a set of bunk beds from that Filipina dorm in my house now. And I would say for those that think that men from here are some kind of predators or can't, I have three degrees. Yeah. Uh, I'm obviously well educated. I had no issue with meeting women here. I just I wanted a woman who didn't have all the other stuff added on to it. So, um, and that's what I found. Yeah, and that's great. That's great. I want to get into that, and I'm pretty sure you know people are going to be, you know, asking me certain things too. But I'm looking at it just right now. I want to really want to talk to you um, again as a person who's on this side of the. Uh, the world and um, you know I have my own journey I guess you know that I can talk about where I am and what's getting me uh, turning me that way to the Philippines you know I really consider myself to be a Filipino now but um, so what do you project in your future now there once you get back uh, settled back into the Philippines and just the long term outlook oh you know what I want to ask you before that how long ago was this? Did you meet Rue? Uh, twenty six, uh, twenty fifteen. We started talking. Twenty sixteen. We got married. Okay, twenty sixteen. So you all been together for about seven years. Yeah. Okay. This will be our, this November will be our seven year wedding. Okay, so you actually between the time you first 
knew of her and got married, I guess you courted, so to speak, for about a year. Uh, about nine months. Okay. About nine months. Okay. It was just a crossover into the next calendar yeah. year, that's all. Oh, that's, some, some people may consider for nine months to be quick. Yeah. What, what, did, what do you think about that? It's quick if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, and, and I can't, and I really can't say anything because uh, my wife, my ex-wife, of course, I got divorced five years ago. But I think our actual courtship might have been even shorter than that. But I had kind of known her, you know, we were in the same organization for a while. So if you want to gauge time, um, Rue is my second wife. So my first wife... I dated her for four years before we got married. We were married for six years. Yeah. So ten years with a woman, and um, a long courtship does not mean it's going to be a successful. It marriage. sure doesn't. You got that right. So. Yeah, I can I can attest to that. And uh, in my case, it was flip short courtship and long marriage, which I you know I can talk about that. But um, so how do you enjoy your little stay back here in America? Did you get done what you wanted to get done? Um, I did. So this was a, a mission of purpose. Um, I did bring my wife and, and daughter to get to see family. And Which is family. wonderful. I met I met them, and like I say, I'm really pleased to, to see them as well with you. Yeah. Uh, they're, yep. they're upstairs getting their showers in. So Right. And I, and I was glad. Of course, your daughter was not smiling. Yeah, but I would, but y'all did manage to get a smile out of her and put that yeah. picture on Facebook. I said, yeah. oh, she's she smiling. Occasionally. She's a serious baby. I said, oh, she's serious. Yeah. She's more serious than I am. Yeah. Golly. Yeah. And I would tell you that she gets a lot of attention in the Philippines. Um, you know, obviously her being Filipino and, you know, American, uh, she has a different look about her. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's recognized. Obviously her size, she's a lot bigger than Filipino babies. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, of course, she usually has me carrying her on my arms because she's almost half the size of Rue. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, as far as, um, you know, if I got it done, so I got my full license going. I'll be starting a private practice. Um, and so I will not be doing insurance, which means I'll be able to see more people. Um, or less people. I'm not sure if that's gonna how that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. uh, but the plan is to get over there and um, just let my wife start start finishing my house that I have now. First off, I got a uh, man cave that I got to build in the back, so that'll probably be somewhere later in this year. And then looking at maybe some land in Davao and then possibly Cebu. I'd like to have some property, at least three or four places in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And all just to rent them out or um, stay <laughs> actually, or what? No, just to. to to, to jump from place to place. If I get bored in one place for a couple months, I go to my Oh, place. so you uh, you would actually be talking about building houses everywhere? Um, either building or buying ones that are existing already. Oh, well, that's right, existing. That's right. There's always that option. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's great. That's like future next time. Oh, Of course. That's what we're talking about now, the future. <laughs> where do you, where, this is the, the famous question. You know what they do. Because yeah. you know, you all, you vloggers have like a list of standard questions that you ask. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in five years, Mr. Clef? Hopefully at least two properties. Two? Right okay. One I have and then one other in five years. Yeah. Okay, so where are you at now? Zamboanga is it? Zamboanga del Sur. We're in uh, Mindanao, the largest southern island. Kind of sort of smack dab in the middle of the uh, <clears throat> the main portion of the island, if you want to call it. Um, we're eight hours away from Davao by drive. Okay. Um, by flight to Cebu, I think it's 45 minutes or something like that. So, uh, to Manila is like a, an hour and 10 minutes. So there is an airport where you are? Um, Pagadian or Osama, so the closest ones. So about 45 minutes or about an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 20 minutes. Okay, so you drive to the airport is about a, Okay, that's not bad. Because nah, that's no, just like going from Sedona to Phoenix. Yeah. Or where I'm at right now in, in uh, Indiana from Lafayette to Indianapolis. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So that's good. So that's great then. So well, if you, you get the clients, are you ready to see the do clients in America as well by tell it or what? Yeah. So um, I have not um, figured out. I'm probably going to go with Zoom. That's what I'm used to. Yeah, using. that's what I do. Um, we use Zoom. Yeah. I've already got... There's already two Americans that are living in the Philippines that want to be clients of mine. Um, and so we're talking about that. I just have to figure out a, a 
you know, weight, the pay, and all that other stuff. So it's just some little particulars to, to iron out. But yeah, I'm, I should be ready, I would say, by the beginning of next year. I'm going to take this year, kind of get it started and off the ground, and then transition, hopefully, well, over the next year to two years from my agency to my own place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's great then. So are you are uh, trying to get up back out of here, of America here tomorrow, or what? Yeah, tomorrow morning we fly out. Um, I will never do another flight like this, though. I usually do one stop. So we're going from Chicago to Hawaii, from Hawaii to Guam, from Guam to Manila. I usually will fly from uh, Manila to either Japan and then to Chicago or Korea and then to Chicago mm -hmm. or China to Chicago. It's always just one other stop, not two other stops. So how are you going back this time? How are you leaving Chicago? Um, Chicago to Hawaii. You know, I thought about doing that, but then you said from Hawaii, then you going to Guam, Guam yeah. and then Guam to Manila. Yeah. So the, I think the reason why is when you take this particular flight, they've got to pick up more people. So it doesn't run every, I think it runs every other day. So coming, we had a, a almost a day layover, 21 hour layover mm. in Hawaii, which wasn't bad. I, you know, I was able to get out to the beach and get mm. a walk in, but then um, going back very short. The layover from um, going into Hawaii to Guam is about an hour and 10 minutes, and then Guam to Manila is like 45 minutes. So we'll get to the Philippines, I guess technically tomorrow, because we'll be going yeah, back in time. Yeah, going back. Yeah. Um, so it's about 23 hours going back. It okay. was 43 hours coming. I guess what you really look at with that is the actual flight time. time yeah. That's really what you kind of look at. Because I, I thought about going to Honolulu and stuff but I guess if I mean if I did that then like I said it, it may go because I was looking at it on the world atlas and it doesn't seem like it's really a direct line to the Philippines you would think it would be just because Hawaii is out there but it don't seem like it is no. and I, I actually even though the flight's longer I prefer to do to Korea or to Japan it's just instead of Guam Guam and Hawaii, yeah, better. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So they have a way to go straight to Korea from, from Chicago? Yeah. Okay. So that's the better. That's the one I usually take. But for some reason, it didn't come up. Ah, uh, it didn't come up. It wasn't available. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to get into that. Have you eaten? Have you eaten yet? I know you're Filipino. I always ask you that. Did you eat? Yeah, we, we had breakfast this morning. This place serves breakfast. Um, and You're then, talking about breakfast and it's five o'clock. Well, what yeah, are you talking I about? I haven't done I haven't done dinner yet, but uh, like I said, the, the the ladies are getting getting cleaned up, so we'll probably order something here in a little bit. Okay. What do you think you're gonna order? Don't say McDonald's. I don't know. Um, we had McDonald's last night. Oh so. shoot! Now you just had to say McDonald's. Go ahead. Else. <laughs> I don't know. It's we want something with rice. I don't know if I can find something with rice, but also it should have some Asian places around here. Uh, what's the one? I, this the most famous. Uh, man, what's the name of? It? It's a national chain that they always have. Uh, uh, Chinese Panda Express. Panda Express. There you go. Panda Express. Panda Express. That's probably what we'll be having. And I'm pretty sure they're in this area. Yeah, we'll just do a. a DoorDash or whatever the hell that yeah, is. Yeah, so. like I said. Yeah. All right, yeah. Because I said maybe I would have treated y'all to some panda if I was going to still be up here. <laughs> but I know y'all got to, got to get your mind together, I guess, for the, you know, some preparation to go back. You Not know, really. really. We, I mean, um, she's getting the baby cleaned up, so once that happens, it's just a matter of... Uh, Wait until tomorrow morning. We're going to try and get out here about 5 a.m. Yeah. Get over there by 5.30. Uh, that's why I stayed close to the airport. So oh, yeah. You on Mannheim. You, you right at it. Um, and then, because you always want to try and get there four hours early for international flights. Because you never, Four hours? Four, four hours? Four hours. You never know what's going to And then, if you have a flight that's... Um, a lot of flights will be going to China or... Um, Japan or something like that so you got to go through all that put those people through security so if you don't get there early let's say you try and do two hours like you do for regular flights well I usually done Mexico maybe in two hours yeah. 
two hours well, going not, to Mexico. Not a lot of people going that way. You're talking about folks that are trying to get to some, you know. Yeah. Mexico okay. is popular at certain times of the year. Yeah. But going out, out four hours. So I just got to get ready to camp out, huh? Yeah. Okay. Believe it or not, they're gonna probably you're gonna probably be in line for a while. It's gonna take you. I'm gonna say you might have an hour and a half when you're sitting. By the time you're sitting down, because you still gotta go through security and all that other stuff. Now for me, I'm doing four hours because I have a baby too. So yeah, it's hard to carry all the stuff and then make sure she gets there and all that too. So. Well, I guess I gotta get ready for that. But that's one thing I'm doing, and we're certainly gonna be talking again. So maybe when you get back to the Philippines, y'all want to do another a remote interview of me or whatever. Uh, we'll be talking. I've already been on two vlogs the last two weeks. I was well on Philippine Annex twice with uh, George and Heidi. So uh, hopefully I'll continue to do that. All right. Well, nice uh, talking to you. Uh, this is uh, and Mr. Minister Imperial Brown here and with one of my fellow passport brothers, Cliff Norman. He's also a vlogger based in the Philippines, and we just ba we based in Chicago right now, but uh, hope to be seeing you soon and have a beautiful flight and trip back with you and your lovely wife, Rue, and your daughter. What as, you? as Venerou. As, yeah, I was going to ask you because I know that name is a nickname. What is the real I name? As Venerou. As Venerou. What is the significance of that name? Uh, Rue and I were joking about something, and her accent, she said something. It was it was actually as somebody else, but it, was, it came out like as Ven. I'm like, as Ven what? As, and so I just kind of put the Rue into it for her, so as Ven Rue is the, the name. Okay. So it was kind of like an inside joke thing. That we, oh, it was an inside yeah. joke. Okay, you, uh, so you're saying you kind of made it up? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, I got you. I hey. make up a lot of names. So. Hey, I can't say, okay, I got you. So anyway, we got, last we're going to check with you when you get on the other side here. And this is Imperial Brown here, Brother Cliff Norman. We're going to be back at you. And we want to say salamat to our family in the Philippines. Thank you. From Geechee Lion Music.